up what it is what it does thank you for tuning in to the road to breezy mania today is september 19th wednesday um 8 5 a.m right now i'm filling up my two-hour cardio two-hour daily cardio i should say um i was on pace for whew, um nine minute miles which means i would have um got my first half marathon uh which is 13.1 miles and it would have been right at the two hour mark like maybe two minutes maybe two two hours and two minutes but um unfortunately i kind of lost the pace around the nine mile mark so um i'll still get the half marathon but it'll be maybe two hours and seven minutes so uh i'm still happy about it still my furthest run um uh furthest distance and longest time uh, running but um, I wanted to talk about uh, the fact that of course I'm still in Georgia as you can see um, well uh, as I mentioned in the last video my dad has a 20 year old living with him um, she's been there for the past three four months uh, because she didn't have anywhere to go doesn't work doesn't contribute to anything uh, he buys her weed he buys her uh, alcohol I'm assuming that they go out because he said when he met her two years ago when she was 18 he met her at a uh, bar so she had a fake ID so I would assume she still has it and still uses it and he's fine with it but uh, that aside um, on Sunday she was uh, well really Saturday night before my dad and I went out to uh, a couple of different bars. They were, eh, eh, there was just no room to really do anything. But um, yeah, we went out Saturday night. She was supposed to come with us originally. And from what my dad said, it seemed like she wanted him to buy her something to wear because she claimed that she didn't have anything to wear. So he wasn't trying to hear that. He's been spending his money on her, like I said, for the past four months on anything and everything from eating to smoking to drinking you name it so yeah he didn't want to do that so she decided not to come out and on top of that she wanted him to buy uh her some weed i guess before we left out and he wasn't trying to hear it he's like hey i'm going out i'm taking my son out because uh him and i we've never been out to the club before together well maybe once i feel like maybe maybe one time um and but not to the bar that we went to uh so yeah she threw a fit so sunday morning they were getting into it and she was like she was just really wilding out um acting like a child that uh throws a fit when they don't get their way she was throwing like just just making noise throwing his business cards down the steps um he said that she grabbed a knife and claimed she was going to kill herself and just a lot of stuff like that. And I was, I was over it because I've never seen my dad in this predicament. So it's very, very different. I know it's very different for, for him because he's been with Faye for the past, you know, 20 something years, 22, 23 years. So they were just super chill for at least from what I saw. And of course, I'm, I'm sure that they had their uh, issues, but Faye was a, she's a grown woman and she carried herself like that. So she wouldn't, I know she wouldn't be the type to throw a fit like that. So that's just different to see my dad in that predicament. Um, and I can't remember what it was she did, but she did something like that. And this was going on for the entire day. I'm talking like, I don't know, four, four hours, five hours. Um, and I told my dad, I was like, dad, you need to call the cops. Like something needs to be done. This this needs to be put to be put to an end. This needs to stop. And she did something. And I looked at him and I I showed my dad. I had my phone in my hand. I went like this, meaning like, yep, I'm making that call right now. Went outside, I called, um, let my dad know that they'd be uh, at the house very shortly. And if, and that was a I'm pretty sure that was the first time that I ever called 911. So yeah, they pull up maybe 10 minutes later. Um, 
and she happens to be doing laundry so the the laundry room is um right by the garage door to so walk into the garage so and the door is open so she's in the laundry room my dad's talking to the cops and so they the cops go talk to her for a couple minutes uh so um what's going on you okay and of course she <laughs> crazy people like that they just they turn it on turn it off just as quick as they turn it on they turn it off oh no everything's fine oh no i was just wanting some food and and i and we went and got some food and that's it okay so there's there's nothing wrong every you're okay and she was just acting like everything was cool um then they uh asked my dad well do you want to you want to do anything? You want to press charges or anything? Is there any vandalism? Yada yada. And I said, yes, there is. She's been, she's put crosses on pretty much every wall in every room. Because I don't know if it's just because Faye died, but she didn't die in the house. So I don't know. She just, she's just very weird. And I, and I can't, um, I'm not judging her because I don't know what her past is. I don't know what she's went through for her to be like that. But so like I said, to see my dad deal with that is very, very hard for me to just sit there and not do anything. So I had to call the cops, but my dad didn't, of course he was being too nice. He didn't even attempt to press charges. The cops said, well, since she's been here for uh, over 30 days, you would have to go to the, I think to the courthouse to, get some type of eviction notice to give to her which tells her hey in 30 days you have to leave so even if he and they told him they said well you should do it tomorrow which would have which would have been monday and of course my dad's acting like he's going to yeah i'll take care of that tomorrow didn't happen today's wednesday still hasn't been done um but yeah that's that tells her hey in 30 days you gotta go so um yeah that that's been a weird dichotomy so uh, since then, since Sunday, I haven't said a word to her at all. Don't even look at her. Don't even nothing. Past three and a half, four days, I, I don't even mess with her. And last night, um, while I'm cooking dinner, uh, they, I think they, yeah, they went to go pick up some food. And when they got back, it's like 9.30. My dad comes in and he's like, hey, uh, he says to me, hey, you two got to, start communicating with each other uh, if you're going to be in the same house. And I said, and as I'm cooking, like, I didn't even look at my dad because I'm still cooking, talking to him with my back turned. And I said, yeah, you're probably right. You're, you're, you're right. We should. Uh, and that was it. I think I just kept it at that. And then like an hour later, he says to me, um, well, he says to me that he knows that I'm here to help him move because he's supposed to be moving in the next two and a half weeks and he's pretty much hinting hey maybe you should leave and then come back in 10 days <sighs> because it's hard for him to deal with being in the middle of us and i told him i said there's no and like okay there's animosity but there's no negative um, actions. You'll never see me cussing her out or disrespecting her in any way. I just ignore her. I act like she doesn't exist. And he said, well, we should at least all be cordial, yada, yada. So I told him that um, last night, I said, I'm going to attempt to be the bigger person. I said, I, I usually am the bigger person um, when it comes to situations like this. Like, I, I'm not one to hold a grudge towards anyone, but I told him, I said, just, I think it's just because the simple fact that this is you, my father dealing with this, who I've, who's never dealt with this, at least in the past 30 years, and I've never seen deal with this period. So I think that's why it's um, just so hard on my heart. And so like, I think that's why I'm just being, just, I think that's why I'm acting this way rather than just having a conversation with her. So I'm going to try to talk to her in the next couple of hours. Uh, all right, half marathon complete. Yes, I walked the last 10 minutes of it. I don't care. Um, 
Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for watching The Road to Breezy Mania. And like I said, it's going to be a long journey to the WWE. But I'm ready for the entire thing. Oh yeah, and uh, Christian Taylor. You don't want it in the ring. You really don't want it. Alright. Peace, love. Adios.